Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and I'm back again with another really interesting video today. Today guys, we are going to learn about a tool called as amplification which helps us to create quality Node.js applications without writing any single line of code. So basically guys, this is a very powerful tool which can help us to generate code automatically with uh, without actually writing it. Okay, so I hope the video is going to be really interesting for you guys. But before I start with the content, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, then please do subscribe and hit the bell icon for future notifications of more such programming and coding related videos. Let's get started with today's topic. So basically guys, there are a lot of people in the world who do not actually like to code or program, but they have a need to create certain applications. So amplification is actually a really great tool for those people to get started with building their own apps. Uh, basically guys, amplification provides us a bunch of things. It is an open source development tool, which is uh, really great because you don't have to buy it and it can help us to develop Node.js applications. So basically you can create your own website you can create your own rest web uh, web apis without actually writing code you can see that it gives a bunch of uh, things like creating data models it also helps us to create the repository or uh, push our code into our github repository so you can definitely uh, link your github to uh, your amplification account you can also uh, you get it docker container and you can actually run your application on a sandbox and uh, make sure that uh, it is running correctly so you can basically test your application in real world as well okay so now uh, let's get over with the theory part guys and let's uh, go straight forward to the implementation part and you will see how quickly we are able to generate a perfect node.js api so first of all, let's log in into the amplification.com. So you can log in into amplification using your GitHub account. So I'm just going to continue with GitHub here and you can see that now I'm logged in. So now you've got an option of creating a new application guys. So let's click, uh, click on this new app and here you can see that if you want to build your application, you basically need a data model, right? You, uh, by database model, I mean you need certain rows or columns which you need to fetch or update or select or, uh, you know, uh, save, delete, etc. So basically all the CRUD operations, but we don't have that database. Okay. So for example, if you are a business person, you generally work with these Excel sheets, right? So for example, in my case, I've got an Excel sheet in which I've got two column here, a uh, role number and student name. And uh, basically this is the data I want to work with. I want to update these students. I want to uh, add more students. I want to delete students. That's all I want to do. I want to fetch students. Okay. So what I can do here is I can just download this uh, Excel file on my on my system. So I'm just going to download it. Now that I have downloaded it, I can just select here drag and inside my downloads, I will select that student uh, Excel file. So you can see that as soon as I selected the student uh, Excel file, it automatically created a database schema for me. And this database schema basically contains five things. One is the ID created at and updated at. These are the default fields which we get. Alongside, we also get the columns which we added inside the Excel sheet that is roll number and student. Okay. So that is it guys. Now you have to give a descriptive name to your application. So as you saw previously in my screen, I already have a student app created. So I'm just going to name it student2 and click on create app. And that's it guys. Now your app is uh, in progress. One disadvantage of using amplification is that it takes a bit of a time to actually generate your code or to generate your application. So you can see, okay, it's it's quick, but it still will take some time to prepare your sandbox environment and deploy it on your uh, on your testing environment. Uh, so that's the only disadvantage. Other than that, it is pretty quick. So now uh, our application is getting deployed in our sandbox environment for testing. But while it is getting deployed, you can clearly see that in my application, two entities are created. One entity is a student entity, 
which I created myself by providing this Excel sheet. The second entity is a user entity and this user entity actually provides authentication for you to log in into your application and you know do some stuff. So basically amplification not only just gives you a REST API, it also handles the authorization and authentication code as well. Okay, so you can actually create your own user, but by default, it provides you one user, which is called as admin. So you can obviously add more users here, uh, but these are the fields of a user, ID, username, password, roles, uh, updated at, created at, last name and first name. Okay. Similarly, you can uh, check out all the entities. So student is uh, having those five fields, which we already discussed. Okay. So now, while uh, our code is being uh, deployed in the sandbox environment, you can actually click this button here and download the code on your system. So for example, in this case, you will see when I uh, open the zip file, you will see that it gives us a proper uh, Docker project. And this Docker project is having basically two folders here, server and admin. So server, uh, is going to actually create a REST API. So the server uh, is having all the necessary code, all the necessary source code to actually create the swagger, to actually create our uh, REST API endpoints. Whereas in admin UI, it contains the necessary source code to provide us a proper React UI and admin UI to actually add, delete or create uh, new entities of our database object. In our case, we have got two entities, user and student, okay? So you can actually download this code and uh, this is a React code and Node.js code. So you can run this code on your own uh, local machine using Visual Studio or any other ID that you have, okay? Uh, but I'm not gonna run it on my local machine because we are already deploying this in a sandbox environment. So it will get deployed and you will be able to actually use it. So that's the only, uh, so that's how simple is it to create an application, but you can see that it takes a lot of time to actually deploy it in sandbox. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open the previous student app, which I already created. And you can see that this is already deployed. So I'll just click on the open sandbox environment here. And once you open the sandbox environment, your application will start running on the given sandbox server. Uh, okay, it's taking some time, but there you go. You can see that the application is now open. So we have got three options here to connect to our application. One is the GraphQL, one is the admin UI, and one is the REST API. So the REST API is basically the server folder uh, code where we created our REST endpoints. The admin UI is the admin UI, which gives us a UI to create, delete, or update entities. And GraphQL is a sort of a schema description for the data. Okay, let's first start with the admin UI. So by default, we are given one user, which is admin admin. We can always create new users. Uh, so you can see that now I'm logged in and you can see that I've got users here. Uh, one user is automatically there. And then we have got the students table and there are two students which I created. You can always create more students. So for example, row number three and student name is uh, C here. And you can create more students. You can even delete the student as well. So for example, if I want to delete this student, edit and then you can delete it. Okay. So uh, that is how using admin UI, you can add, delete, update your entities. Now that we know about the admin UI, let's go back. And let's check the REST API. Okay, so let's log out. Okay, let's check the REST API. So click on continue here. And now you can see that I am actually provided with a proper swagger to test my REST API endpoints. So the number of endpoints which are given to you depend upon the entities, the number of entities that you are having. So in our case, we are having two entities. So we are given all the rest operations of those two entities. So for users, we have got post, uh, get all users, get user by ID, patch, that means edit the user, delete the user. And the same thing is for students as well. 
But apart from these endpoints, we are given a very important endpoint which is called as authorization. So basically, guys, let's let's try out one endpoint. And you guys will understand what I'm talking about. Let's suppose I want to get all the students in my database. So I'm just gonna click on try out here. You can see that there is a lock here. There is a lock created. Okay. So in the where clause, I'm not giving anything. Let's say the where clause is empty, which basically means I want to fetch all the students irrespective of any where clause. Let me click on execute. And let's see the response. You see the response is unauthorized. Okay. By unauthorized, it means that it basically needs an authorization token. Okay. So how can we generate our authorization token? So by default, our application comes with the username admin and password admin and use using these uh, credentials, we can create a bearer authentication token, a JWT token. So how can we do that? So to do that, there is an endpoint provided to you, which is called as auth. So this is all a by default endpoint provided to you. What you have to do is you have to click on try it out, type the username admin, password as admin and click on execute. Once you click on execute, you will see that in the response, you actually received the access token. So all you have to do is copy this access token, go to uh, on the top in this website and there is a authorize button here. Click on authorize, add that value and then click authorize. And there you go guys, you can see that now you are authorized to perform any REST API option in this Swagger. So you are, now you can see that all the log buttons here have turned enabled, but uh, otherwise previously they were disabled. Okay. So let's go to our students uh, section now. Okay. This is my student API. This is a get operation. All I want to do is fetch all these students. Let me click on execute here. And there you go, guys. In the response, I am able to fetch all these students which I created. So role number two was called student name B and the role number three was called student name C. So not only I can perform get operation, guys, I can perform post, I can create new students, I can get the student by ID, I can edit, delete, I can do anything I want. Uh, apart from that, there are two other endpoints which are provided for checking the health of your REST API. Uh, no authorization is needed for these endpoints, but definitely they are much useful if you just want to know if your application is up or not. So there you go guys, you can see that an entire REST API was given to you, a full on uh, admin UI was given to you and all you had to do is upload this one data model Excel, which you generally use for your own, uh, you know, for your uh, everyday, uh, everyday work. All you have to do is take this Excel, upload it, and an entire application, a proper CRUD based application was given to you. So guys, that was all about this auto code generation tool called as amplification. I hope the video was interesting to you and I hope now even if you don't like to code, you are still able to build your uh, applications uh, using this tool. So if you like this video guys, then please do not forget to hit the like button and share this video with your friends as well. Also guys, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, then I highly request you to subscribe and hit the bell icon for future notifications. I make here videos every day from Monday to Friday guys. So I'll see you guys in the next video. But until then, if you have any comments, suggestions, feedback for me, write down in the comment section below. would be happy to address them. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care and bye-bye.